there were certain days in school that you knew were going to be great. No, I'm not talking about pizza day in the cafeteria. I'm talking about when you sit down in class and the teacher would wheel in a TV. I just realized I'm old and a teacher these days probably just brings up YouTube or something through a projector. Can anyone watching even name what this projector was called? Exactly. But when that TV was turned on and that VHS was popped in, the educational day was saved thanks to... Bill Nye the Science Guy. Did you hear that? That was the sound of my childhood. Bill Nye the Science Guy, the voice of a classroom generation. Or more than one generation, I guess. Apparently, I've heard some schools still play Bill Nye in class today. Let me know if that's true. But for me, Bill Nye was there my whole school life. He was always there to teach me about the weather or magnetism and even garbage. Just when I I thought he couldn't teach me anymore, he always had another lesson up his lab coat sleeve. So today, I wanted to take a look back at some of my most prominent memories from my years in school. Let's take a look at Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy! What's some science? Bill Nye was the singular vessel that made any sort of learning at school fun. And then you're hit with one of the best intros to any show ever. Just the class going wild, chanting Bill, 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 and then trying to hit the perfect timing on science rules. Ah, yeah, it sure does, Bill. It sure does. Bill Nye would come on screen wearing his signature lab coat and bow tie and would just start spitting facts as if we have known him forever. The premise of the show would be to teach you some interesting scientific facts for about 22 minutes, but adding in a dose of humor that made it fun. If quirkiness were a person, it would be Bill. He's just a big old goofball. The show would start off with some form of cold open skit that would let us in on the theme of the episode before we would be introduced to his pretty iconic set, which was dubbed Nye Laboratories. It was so high energy constantly jumping between different set pieces for each part or scene of the lesson. While having some genuine real teaching, the on-camera charisma that Bill would bring to every episode, never missing a beat, is infectious and honestly quite impressive. This was how you got through to students to retain information and apply themselves even better. Homework, pop quizzes, lectures, nah, that's not the way. I have ADHD. If you can entertain me while teaching me, there's a 100% chance that I will actually learn. Each episode would be full of skits, parodies, and cutaways that would all tie back into the episode's theme. And a lot of the time, we would also get the appearance of a special celebrity guest. Love a dub dub! Wait, this isn't Rick and Morty. Love a dub hey, that's funny, man! In addition, we would also see a bunch of kids teaching smaller parts of the lessons. This always made it feel as if the kids were just as cool as Bill, and gosh darn it, did I want to be one of those kids in these videos. Hanging out with Bill and telling the audience something about the weather? Clearly, the production of the show was more on the low side, which we will get into why in just a bit, but it really adds to the charm of the show. It would almost feel equivalent to a vlog you'd see on YouTube, with these handheld camera shots or Bill just going out and doing things to emphasize his point. It also felt like you could pick up a camera and have a basic knowledge of editing to make something like this. It just feels so homegrown and cozy. In fact, here's my own show right here. Jordan Fringe, he's full of cringe. Cringe, 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 cringe rules. It's already been canceled. Now, Bill Nye is not exactly Bill Nye the science guy. What I I mean by that is that Bill himself plays a heightened version of himself for the show. The Bill behind the Bill, however, is not just a regular guy who plays a scientist for the sake of entertainment. He's actually quite smart, and a lot of who he was and what he studied shows itself within the show. Let's take a look at how that all came to be. 65 million years ago! Stick around for Bill Nye the Science Guy. Oh cool, it's Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill was a pretty smart kid. He had this fascination for the way things work. After high school, he went to Cornell University and more specifically to study at the Sibley School of Mechanical Aerospace Engineering, which was one of Cornell's private undergraduate colleges. His interests in science would grow even more thanks to taking an astronomy class with the one and only Carl Sagan. By 1977, Bill Nye would graduate with a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering, which would lead him to working for Boeing, where he was able to invent a hydraulic resonance suppressor tube that would be used on Boeing's 747 line of airplanes. This is where Bill Nye was also finding the comedic side of himself pushing out a bit more. He started getting into doing stand-up comedy and found a fondness in making others laugh. Put your hands together. Welcome, Bill Nye. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Bill. Yeah. My name is Bill. 
Right. At this point in our story, I was working on business jet navigation systems, laser gyroscope systems during the day, and I'd take a nap and go do stand-up comedy by night. One of these? <laughs> That's the guy's life. Guaranteed. <laughs> 1986, he quit working at Boeing and wanted to focus on the entertainment side of his passions, going back to Cornell the following year for the 10-year reunion where he was able to speak with Carl Sagan once more, mentioning to him that he wanted to make a science-based TV show. He went over all of the fun and different ideas about what he would talk about, but Carl told him to focus on pure science. That would be the thing that kids resonate with rather than technology. Bill held on to that advice, but in the meantime, he was able to get a gig working as a writer and actor on on the Seattle-based local program called Almost Live. He was invited to be on the show when an opening became available that they needed to fill and Bill was asked to bring that science knowledge stuff to the program. This was the big moment that would change everything. On Almost Live, Bill would perform various characters or even demonstrations relating to science. But the singular moment came from Bill correcting a pronunciation of the word gigawatt, to which John Keister, the host of the show, retorted with, who do you think you are? Bill Nye the science guy? Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Nye, Bill Nye, Bill Nye, Bill Nye, Bill Nye the science guy. This would be where the name of the show came from and the full name we call Bill Nye now. Fast forwarding to 1993, Bill would develop a pilot episode of what would become Bill Nye the science guy, specifically for KCTS TV, a Seattle based public broadcasting station, with backing from the National Science Foundation and the U.S. Department of Energy. The show would be a part of a syndication deal that other local public stations could use on their broadcasts specifically to hit the requirements under the Children's Television Act. But it went beyond just public broadcast. It would also be syndicated to commercial stations as well, which resulted in it becoming the first program to run on both at the same time. April 14th, 1993, the pilot for the show aired, and the following weeks it would air nationwide across other PBS stations. Disney would jump in as well, serving as a producer along with Rabbit Ears Productions, and Disney would end up publishing the series as well. From 1993 to 1999, Bill Nye the Science Guy would span six seasons containing a total of 100 episodes, not including the original pilot. It was a phenomenon, becoming the most watched educational show on TV for the United States. But what became even more impactful aside from broadcast outreach was that these were perfect for classroom education. Here's how the school day would officially be changed forever. Disney had a production and distribution label known as Disney Educational Products. Their purpose was to curate their own media specifically educational based on VHS for the sole purpose of educational institutes, like school. As time would go on, this would be transitioned into DVDs naturally, as well as e-learning tools to help in the classroom. Aside from thinking to yourself right now, wow, what didn't Disney have their hands in? This was how all 100 episodes of Bill Nye the Science Guy would make their way to schools. These here were different from the very few VHS VHS home video releases of Bill Nye. Each tape would hold one episode of the show, don't ask me how I got them, versus the regular home video releases by Disney that contained two episodes apiece. For these educational releases, the back of the tape would include some nifty questions from the episode included to speak to the class about, along with the cheat sheet to help the teacher out a bit. Now there would be different printings of them, but they all followed the rule of one episode per VHS, and through this, Bill Nye the Science Guy became a staple inside of the classroom from the 90s and throughout the 2000s, and as far as I know, still something shown within classrooms. Obviously, now most places aren't using VHS anymore, some still may, and I think watching it on YouTube is the easiest way classes can get access to it. Every single episode, no matter the topic, was an absolute banger. The way Bill Nye was able to break down any topic made the learning much more comprehensive, and a lot more fun. I've said it before, but with infotainment or educational-based content, the real ticket winner is to teach and not preach in a way that makes it feel like I am being spoon-fed information. Bill Nye the Science Guy kind of breaks that rule, as of course you knew you were being taught something, and it didn't try to hide it, but it just found a way to make it fun and engaging. Bill didn't sit there and tell you things, he got up and showed you what he was talking about, with demonstrations, skits, and any way he could that was much more dynamic. To give you the full scope of what I'm talking about, let's break down your standard episode of the show. 
let's take a look at one of my favorite episodes from Bill Nye the Science Guy, Volcanoes. Per usual, the episode would have a cold open with Bill either doing a skit, or in the case of this episode, him walking around some freshly hardened lava leading into the topic of volcanoes. It's done in a quick and funny way, having him speed up the footage going around the area before we hit the classic musical delight of an intro. Bill, Bill, Bill. Bill. Bill, stop interrupting your own intro. Bill, 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 Bill. We then get a fake brought to you by ad that is a reference to volcanoes, but under the guise of a law firm. The law offices of magma, lava, tephra, and pumas. This is another thing that you would see every episode that was a play on the outro of the show, saying brought to you by the National Science Foundation. Bill would somehow get into his lab and start right away by explaining the base concept of what we are looking into today, and show off some form of experiment. What's the big deal? Take a look. Uh, not gonna lie, when he revealed he's actually not in his lab, and instead in front of Mount St. Helens showing off the changed landscape from the last major eruption, I wasn't old enough to be aware of the art and magic of film production, and had my jaw agape in my brain trying to figure out how in the heck that was even possible. Yeah, I know how it's done now, Steven. You can stop typing that snarky comment, thank you very much. Bill would then go into the different types of eruptions a volcano could have, all while being right on the edge of one. This guy's my hero. Ever since movies like Dante's Peak and Volcano, this is all I've ever wanted to do. Why haven't I done this as an adult? Well, because I'm a scared little bit. In continuing from there, we would take a look at the Earth's tectonic plates, and where they would collide and how volcanoes would even work in the first place. But he then brings up the example of Hawaii, which the islands are made from volcanoes but rest in the middle of a plate and not between two colliding ones, then walking us over to a presentation regarding a magma plume under the sea. Well, under the plate specifically, where the power of the plume punches through the sea floor within the middle of the plate. We then cut away after Bill gets his point across from his demonstrations to one of the kids on the show explaining why volcanoes erupt into these gloriously terrifying explosions. We then go back to Bill looking into a skylight that lets us look at the lava underneath, as well as seeing it in real time making new land and even a lava tube that he just casually walks through. This man has no fears and for that, we love him. Sometimes a deep voice narrator would come in to break up the gaps in scenes for the episode to emphasize a point or continue on something Bill or one of the kids had said. Lava is in constant motion. Now, what I really like about this part here with Bill is that he goes beyond just the happening of the volcano and looks at how nature and life continues on, the natural beauty of the process of Earth. We also get random moments like this. Lava days at Magma Box with balloons. And as always, balloons and hot dogs from mom and dad. These filler moments would be nice ways to jump between locations and segments in the show that are a bit silly, but really fit into the tone that the show is consistent in having. Like, I swear, this is some of the stuff I would have seen in the middle of the night on Adult Swim. We now arrive once again at the top of a volcano, where we learn about the caldera that right underneath holds its magma chambers, explaining the fluctuations of height that it presents itself at depending on the level of magma flowing in or out of the chamber. We then jump into to the reoccurring segment, consider the following, where Bill would start spitting some fresh facts about the topic we were on, as well as some sort of visual representation of it. Here, leading him to explaining how a volcano can form and the science behind why the pressure builds up, whether it be in the middle of a plate or between two plates colliding. Jumping into him talking about the different types of volcanoes and how they differ and work, the shield type, the cinder cone type, and the strata cone type. We also get a look back at how destructive and horrifying a volcano can be, with their example being Mount Vesuvius and what that eruption caused to the local areas where buildings were crumbling down. We get an old-timey skit about a family eating dinner while the dad plays with his mashed potatoes and gravy like he's in Close Encounters of the Third Kind or something. Instead, he's creating a volcano, and this skit, uh, just gets wild. What does this remind you of? Honey, you know what that reminds me of. Come on, honey, I want to hear you say it. Honey, it's embarrassing. Make it big and strong. <sighs> May I please be excused from the table? Yeah. They showed us this in school. But just as spicy as that was, we get even spicier as we now discuss the temperatures of lava. I've always wanted to do this. Oh, yeah, uh, sorry, I'm getting distracted. Bill, how hot was that lava? It's over a thousand degrees Celsius. Ah, right, thanks. Now we get another skit in the form of a parody for Hawaii 5 here called Pahoi Hoi 5 where they are investigating rock samples from underneath the Earth's crust. It's so dumb, but I love it so much. We get a funny look at the early suits of 
protection to get near an active volcano before a segment where we would get to meet a cool scientist. Here is Sinichiro Ikebe, where we learn about Mount Aso, which consists of five peaks and more specifically one of them being Mount Nakadake, which is an active volcano in Kyushu, Japan, where they are studying the effects of the volcano on the environment as at the time 50,000 people lived there. After that, we learn about extinct volcanoes, ones that haven't erupted in such a long period of time that the plume has cooled to a solid, as well as dormant volcanoes which are classified as such meaning that they haven't erupted in at least 200 years but still could erupt at some point. Then of course, an active one, which just means it constantly has eruptions. Now at the end of most episodes, we would be treated to some form of a parody music video based on popular songs. Here we have one that parodies TLC's waterfalls called Lava Flows. <laughs> All right, this is a bop. At the end, Bill would say his goodbyes and go off to do more sciencey things. And that's really your typical episode of Bill Nye the Science Guy. Scenes and information would be constantly flowing your way like a bunch of lava. But this was the vibe of the whole show. Quick cutaways, tons of information, and somehow it was all comprehensible. But after Bill Nye the Science Guy ended, what would come next? Well, I'm afraid you might not believe me. Bill Nye the Science Guy. I'm balancing on one finger. After the final episode of Bill Nye the Science Guy in February of 1999, what was next for Bill? Well, his Science Guy show would still go on to be continuously played in schools to, again, as far as I know, today, shaping the minds of each generation and becoming this iconic figure to most. In studies and surveys, it proved that kids who were viewers of Bill Nye's program were more observative and retained more information than those who weren't. As well as because of the show, kids were enjoying science more. But with the show over after six Six seasons spanning most of the 90s, the first next thing that would happen was still in 1999, this time for Noggin, a smaller channel owned by Nickelodeon and the Children's Television Workshop. They were able to acquire the past 100 episodes to broadcast on that channel, and wanted to work together to develop something for the channel. It wouldn't be more Bill Nye the Science Guy, but it turned into these shorts featuring Bill playing the same character, where he was now working as the head sparkologist for the channel. These shorts were meant to spark conversations and topics with the viewers to feel interactive, like Bill was once again talking directly with you, the audience. Originally though, Bill wanted to develop a few more show ideas that weren't just science-based, but instead tackled other subjects like math, and even one based upon having good judgment. I personally think that it would have been cool to see Bill Nye go and teach other subjects as well. The science game was ran by this man. Just imagine how much more fun math would be with him. Well. Cyber Chase came in handy for that, honestly, but the point I'm making is that Bill Nye works so well because of Bill, the way he is able to break down different topics for you to understand. But through trying to come up with another concept, we land on Bill Nye's The Eyes of Nye, a show that would focus on more serious and sometimes controversial topics that would be aimed at an older demographic. Bill and KCTS would go back and forth dealing with disputes and money as the show would have originally cost a lot more to make, with them not being able to afford to produce the pilot for the show. PBS passed on the idea in general for nationwide broadcast and American public television stepped in to produce it. Unfortunately, the show only lasted one season in 2005 before being cancelled. Bill Nye says that it was the mistake of not wearing his iconic bow tie and instead wearing a regular tie. Listen, he's right, the bow tie makes all the difference. It would then be another 11 years until Bill would make headlines for what he was working on. In 2016, Netflix announced that Bill Nye had a new series coming. Bill Nye saves the world, which would be a spiritual successor to Bill Nye the Science Guy, now done in a more talk show format with guests coming on the show and participating in the topics and issues that would be brought up. The theme song was even produced by Tyler the Creator, that's really cool. And along with Bill, there were five other hosts that would be included for certain topics or bits. While still focused on science, it was also focused on the connection science has to modern day pop culture, society, politics, and more. The show premiered in April of 2017 and lasted for three seasons ending in 2018. Once that show was over, the next big moment was in 2019, during John Oliver's HBO show Last Week Tonight. When discussing climate change, Bill Nye appeared to address the topic as well, but in a way we have not seen him before. He directly speaks to the kids who watched him during the 90s and early 2000s saying that you're grown up and there's no sugarcoating these topics. And by that, I mean he starts swearing up a storm. It was equally as funny as it was shocking for Bill Nye to do this, but the plan to bring Bill Nye into this 
this worked as it went viral and took the internet by storm. And most recently, in 2022, this past August, Bill Nye had another new show premiere, this time for Peacock's streaming service called The End Is Nigh. It was a six-part docuseries that was worked on with Seth MacFarlane and Brandon Braga. This series would explore natural and unnatural threats to humanity with how Bill can come up with scientific ways to save the world. It would feature the same skit-based moments and still have some sort of air of comedy to it, but it was also a bit more serious and the budget for it was a lot higher than any production he had done before. Who knows if a second season of this series comes to be, but it's just so weird to think that Bill Nye has been around my entire life and he hasn't stopped trying to teach me scientific things. Thank you, Bill. Also, in 2017, Bill Nye Science Guy would release, returning back to a PBS production that was a documentary about Bill Nye, from where he was to where he is now and what he is focusing on for the planet. A documentary that I actually contributed to the funding process for and even have a signed copy from the creators of the documentary as one of my backing rewards. I am just waiting for you, Bill. I need you to sign this for me. I hope you see this video one day. Bill Nye the Science Guy was the catalyst of my learning interest for certain topics growing up, having a fascination with so many different things solely because of the way Bill Nye would present them for me. For whatever he does next, I can't wait to see it. But as far as the original show, it lives on as this classic educational series of content that any generation at any moment in time can take something away from. Through its run, it was nominated for 23 daytime Emmys, winning 19 of them, which is pretty impressive. Whether you saw it as a kid when it was new or are in class now watching it, Bill Nye was a huge part of mine and so many countless other kids' lives that showed us learning can be fun and why the stuff we are learning is important for the future of the human race and for the future of this planet. Let me know your experiences with Bill Nye the Science Guy in the comments below. Do you have fond memories of days in the classroom with Bill on the TV? Maybe you never had Bill Nye in your classroom and you've watched this whole video scratching your head as to what the heck I've been talking about. Either way, let me know. And before I go, I want to leave you with a piece of advice that Bill's father gave to him. Leave the world better than you found it. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.